Hello, uh, I'm Richard Raffin. Uh, in this video, uh, I'm going to talk about how I approach bowl design. Um, I've got a number of bowls which I've been using for decades. Um, I've got a number of half bowls, uh, which I hope will show you the difference between what I consider a, to be a really good bowl and, and a not so good bowl. And a lot of what goes into making a good bowl is the balance, the weight, how they feel. It's not just a pretty bit of wood um, turned into a bowl. These are plates used every day. Uh, this morning this had uh, cheese on it. It's been washed up. Uh, it's just dried uh, and it's, uh, it's, it's now actually dry. Another piece of uh, ash. Very nice flame figure. And... Uh, used as a, a kind of general plate. It's got a few knife marks on it. That doesn't worry me too much. Little foot, nice broad foot so that it's not going to tip over. This is the one of the very first things I made. Probably It might even be the first thing I made. Uh, a walnut plate. Uh, it's been used now for 54 years, nearly 54 years. Uh, Again, daily use at the moment, it's looking a bit dry because it got to the, the bottom of the pile of plates. Um, so uh, probably hasn't been used for a, a few days. So those plates, I always enjoy these. You've got a bit of toast on them, you finish your toast. There's a nice pattern to look at. I don't know why people don't want to use decent bits of wood made into plates. It's beyond me. We'll have a look at bowls which are in kind of daily use. This is uh, some cherry. Uh, it's got a very slight kind of pinkish mark in the bottom which is part of the patina and it's got a pinkish mark because at this time of year in Australia it's used to hold strawberries. And uh, this bowl I think was made about 25 years ago. Uh, been in pretty well constant use ever since. The original blank had a split, which accounts for this design, and uh, I'll probably get around to showing you how to do that in some video. This one, uh, Tasmanian Blackwood, which is very similar to the Australia uh, to um, Hawaiian Koa, uh, a very nice feather pattern in it. Now, this looks a bit flat at the moment, but every time it gets used. And I'm just going to wipe it up now. So I've got a little bit of salad oil. So every time it's used for salad, it's just like polishing the bowl for the first time, and it smells better. And so when you finish your salad, you have this nice pattern to look at. Blackwood again, this is must be approaching 20 years old. I am, of course, using a wooden bowl for the oil. This is normally my little nut bowl, personal nut bowl. Very nice, you can just hold it in your hand and it's a, it's a kind of modest proportion of nuts. Very nice. Um, this bowl I made on the Norwegian wood turning cruise uh, about 10 years ago. It's a tripod bowl, got three little feet, so it always sits square. Um, it gets used for all kinds of things, um, mostly for salad, but occasionally I'll put stew or something like that in it. And uh, this is the, the ash, which would, when it's fairly fresh, is like the, the first plate, this kind of color. And that's how it develops uh, when it gets a it gets a patina. It'll be a different colour on the outside because it doesn't have the uh, have the, have the same kind of use. And this gets very smooth on the inside because it's got lessis sanding it. Very nice. And that again, if I want to oil that up, I can get rid of the oil in there and and just oil it up. But this gets washed. Uh, at least half a dozen times a week and 
that's been the case for 10 years. And I'm not sure this bowl was ever sanded. I think that's uh, just off the tool. Another bowl I made on the subsequent cruise. It was about six years ago. And uh, this is a piece of birch. And I use that mostly for uh, cereal, for um, uh, muesli, um, I suppose what Americans would call oatmeal. Uh, porridge, that kind of thing. Uh, turn green, very slightly warped. Always enjoy using it. Won't fall over. It wobbles a bit, but very nice to use. One, a maple quilted, as you see, uh, made in 1983, uh, in use ever since. The oil seems to be coming through on the outside, or maybe that's my hand, but again, this is used a lot. Uh, and it's just developed this lovely soft patina, much smoother on the inside now than the outside, again, because it's had, it's been sanded with porridge and lettuce and cucumber and stuff like that. So it develops a very nice patina. You know, the much bigger bowl, this uh, was made in the, uh, about 1976 um, of olive ash. And uh, I thought I'd better keep one of my production bowls from about that time, and this is it. Uh, it doesn't get that much use these days because a 12 by five inch bowl, or it might be 13 by five, is a big salad bowl, unless you either got a very large family or you eat an awful lot of salad. So that's the um, a small group of, of bowls which I use day to day. And uh, what we'll do now is take a look at the cross sections of similar bowls. Now this was my second or third bowl, uh, large bowl. Uh, it's an absolute classic early bowl. Uh, terrific looking wood. Um, this, when I first turned it, had greens and pinks in it. Uh, it, was, it was spectacular stuff and some nice figure. Well, my mother used it for 25 years um, and since then it's just been kicking around um, because it's not a very good bowl. It might look good, but flashy wood does not make a good bowl. A good bowl is much more to do with shape. and. I made another bowl to go with this one here, uh, only this one we've got it in half. This was cut when I was uh, writing turn bowl design, and it's an absolute classic of an early bowl. We have a rim here which you've managed to hollow it out, just round it over, grateful to have hollowed it out. Um, got the inside, the outside is roundish, that's okay. Uh, across the bottom, um, this is fairly steep, and then you've got this kind of shallow V here. Uh, when you pick a bowl like that up, it almost wants to slip out of your fingers. Uh, all the weight is in the bottom. It feels heavy, clunky, wooden. That's where the word comes from, heavy and clunky and wooden. Um, and that is in marked contrast to this bowl which is, was made in, uh, again, in the, in the 70s. Um, this one has a nice clean sweep all the way around. These are made just out of interest on screws, which came into about here. And occasionally I hit a screw and I got very good of uh, making them look like knots. Fortunately, you only hit one screw. Uh, you usually hit one screw and the other one didn't go in quite as far. So you just have a lot of bowls have one little knot in them. Um, but the outside uh, has a related curve, but it's not the same. I tend to think that a, an even wall bowl is really quite boring. Um, what I like is, is a kind of wedge which fits into your finger. Uh, when you pick up a bowl, generally there, it just it's at the right angle to pick up. With this one, uh, the weight up in the rim here is uh, counterbalanced by the weight down in the base. 
We have another similar one here. This was made uh, much more recently, uh, probably in the 90s, when I had a um, uh, larger chucks which could just grip the foot. And if anything, this one just didn't feel more than adequate for a production bow. Just didn't feel quite right if you're starting to get really picky because there's a bit, just a shade too much wood in here. I could have come in slightly wider or maybe taken a little bit out of there. Still a very nice bowl, but not quite of the quality of the other one. This is my very first bowl, uh, made sort of mid-January in 1970. And I think it's mulberry. Uh, used for years by my mother as a sugar bowl mostly. I don't know what the, where the burn mark came from. Um, this was originally turned on screws, uh, which I turned off, which was a very unusual thing to, to do in those days. Uh, and as you can see, it's a fairly kind of wide base, fairly chunky bowl. Um, suffers from much of the same uh, kind of defects as I see them as the uh, the half walnut bowl we've just looked at. So this is perfectly functional. Um, could probably be used for another two or three centuries, uh, but it will never be a good bowl, in my view. Always needs to just come in a little bit more there, give it a bit more visual lift. When I was writing turn bowl design, I was looking for really good bowls to cut in half. Bowls which felt right and uh, looked good. So this is one. Still slightly thinning here, a little bit of weight at the top, uh, but just felt very nice indeed. Uh, this started off as a kind of pale pink, it's Tasmanian Myrtle. Have an elm bowl here, clean sweep around, a little bit of detail, and that in part is to add visual interest, but it also means that when you pick it up, your fingers just get underneath that, and it just makes it slightly easier to pick up. I always grip around the foot here, um, because if you have a recess, uh, that really compromises um, what you're able to do. It just means that if you wanted to cut this a little bit deeper, you can't do it because there's a recess underneath. Um, there are other issues with that as well, but that's the main one to me. Here's a really nice mango bowl, which I cut in half. And you know, a lot of you will be thinking, oh, this is almost criminal to do something like that. Um, if you... Uh, want to do something with it, you just stick a back on it and hang it on the wall. Um, and if you know you're going to cut it in half and hang it on the wall, you might want to remove the foot and just keep it rounded on the base. Here's one which didn't feel quite so good. Uh, when I felt it in there, it just felt, where my thumb is, just felt a bit flat. It's not really that bad but it just didn't feel quite right, which is why I cut it in half. You know, it, it really pays to cut a few in half, the good and the bad, because you learn so much uh, from doing that. Well, the bowl of this shape, I expect there to be a little bit more weight in the bottom. And you can slim the wall out. You almost expect the wall to be slimming out. Uh, again, I don't really want an even wall thickness. I suppose if you're going to pierce it, then that's slightly different. Um, but uh, in this case, the whole thing seems to require a wall slimming out to the rim, a bit more weight in the bottom. Similar kind of bowl. I do a lot of bowls this sh shape turned green. Uh, mostly they warp a bit more than this and in this case I really didn't feel just felt a bit kind of thick just where my thumb is or 
more where my finger is on the outside um, and I could also see daylight through uh, this when the when the wood was wet uh, transmits light very quickly so uh, it was cut in half for that reason as much as anything um, and when you, something like that happens just cut the thing in half uh, because it then gives you a chance uh, to actually see physically uh, what your fingers are feeling you always learn quite a bit from doing that so while we're on thin bowls uh, this is one decorated with verdigris as, uh, with a bit of gold as you can see and I cut it in half because it felt really good um, it's got quite a bit of wood in the base as you can see um, but I was it was a very nice little bowl and uh, it was gripped uh, for hollowing uh, using one of these beads using shark jaws so in that way I was able to maintain this kind of outward flowing curve another one in the same series outward flowing beads all the way up or most of the way up tapering out a, a very nice little bowl uh, went through an exhibition failed to sell um, so it got chopped in half and it was about the time uh, I was uh, doing the revamp of, uh, of turn bowl design which is the art of turn bowls and then we get a little bowl like this which um, I would think of as harmless not a particularly good bowl not a particularly bad one um, it's uh, when you feel it it's fine just a little kind of sugar bowly type thing uh, trinket bowl now onto the bigger stuff I no longer have a lathe to make bowls this size as uh, about uh, 14 inch across which is about 360 I think um, with a bead there and this really is fine down in here but I think up on the rim that just is heavier than it needs be and so up here I've marked what I think would be an improvement coming down to the little bead having a bead at the transition is is really not too bad a thing to do you do have to be careful with a bowl like this not to get this too thin because uh, I have seen a bowl like this picked up by the side grain heavy in the base picked up a bit fast and the rim snapped off so you don't want them too thin a similar kind of bowl it's a big outflowing oak uh, really quite nice that could have maybe have been slimmed down a little bit there but that felt felt pretty good and if you go onto my website you'll see uh, quite a few of these uh, under the green turn bowls another little one which is uh, colored purple mostly to show up the, the wall thickness pretty nice shape I was quite happy with that but looking at it now I would prefer I think I would just take that down into about there and and just pull that around a little bit and I think that would just look and feel better but from the top it looks fine it's really just when you start to look at it underneath and it just feels a little thick in there I've always liked making rounded bowls uh, this is a little horizontal scrub one from 1982 natural aged uh, with a bark rim bowl just I see these again as kind of little personal nut bowls little chip bowls that kind of thing uh, but you can also put stuff in it bit of weight in it just kind of stables it up so they work very nicely um, more often than not these days I'm making what I call pots these uh, round bottom pieces which again are designed to wobble a little bit here's a smaller one 
with a bit of rust and verdigris on it. Then we turn it round. This is very much the cross section I'm going for. Um, usually probably a shade more weight in the bottom just to give it uh, definite stability. Um, I'm not too worried about even wall thickness although um, or even taking too much out in the corner here. It's just uh, it's more of a kind of visual thing than anything else um, because as far as the weight goes when you pick them up again you somehow expect to feel more weight in the bottom and the ones with more weight in the bottom uh, tend to feel better. Uh, I don't know what's happened to the ones which I cut in half which you'll see in uh, the Art of Turn bowls um, but I suppose they're hanging around somewhere. And here I've got another couple of cross sections from smaller ones. This one as you can see has a little foot uh, but that's generally and, and that should have bent in a little bit more it looks as though uh, don't know what happened. It would have been green turned. So anyway, a little bit more weight in the bottom just makes all the difference. Now we have a couple of bowls which I made uh, for uh, turn bowls down, I think, or maybe the other turn bowls, uh, as an example of uh, a fairly typical early, early bowl. Uh, most bowl turns have been there and done this kind of thing. Uh, you've hollowed it out, you're grateful to have uh, hollowed it out and got it vaguely smooth and then you just round the rim over, not thinking too much about that and off it goes to the admiring relatives. Um, and it, it feels pretty heavy there. Um, as a utilitarian bowl, it doesn't look too bad. Um, it would function, probably see everyone on this planet out, so there's no reason why it shouldn't last for a couple of hundred years, it's that substantial. But it's not a good bowl, doesn't matter how good the wood is, how pretty the wood is, it is not a good bowl. Um, now I've put in a line here which would improve the shape, no end, and there's a teeny little bit of a line just up there where as I run my finger over that it feels slightly bulbous. If that had the makings, if I kept it, that would have been a kind of fairly good roughed out bowl. A similar one, slightly thinner, a much improved beginner's bowl if you like. And in this case, see this side, you can hopefully see that it's just taken a kind of short cut across there. So on the other side, I've drawn the line here, we come sweeping around there, almost nothing there, a little bit more there, and the outside would be improved by just coming in to the bottom there. And so if we look at this one, you begin to see really where the problems lie. It went a little bit deep there. This is not my bowl, this is uh, given given to me by a friend as, a, as, a, as an example for the uh, to go in the Art of Turn bowls. You could have done with a lot more off there and the problem really is as much as anything is with the recess in the bottom for the expanding collet. Uh, it really didn't have any wood to play with at all here whereas if that had been on a foot you could have changed all that and got away with it and turned it into a good bowl. Another one where there's almost got it right but just a little lumpy down the outside here. Uh, he never finished this one or he sanded the outside but just thought he'd lost it altogether on the inside. Uh, it could have hung in there as, as a utilitarian bowl, um, but it just doesn't feel very nice. So again, Fred cut it in half and uh, I think we all learn a bit from that. Uh, finally, we have one here which is a real classic of early turning. Uh, when you discover, when you've got a bowl blank and you discover curves and you do the curves but then you really run into trouble 
when you come into the inside and try and follow that. And what happened here was that ended up with, uh, we'll just cut that side for the moment, that ended up with this undulating pattern. Well, the guy who made this, who I never met, um, but apparently thought it was such a bad bowl um, that he'd throw it out. And I got it somewhere along the way. Now, it wasn't a total loss. Uh, there was enough wood here to have taken the outside across uh, down there and could have come down the inside and got a nice smooth curve. Uh, and that would have looked um, half decent. It was a very nicely made bowl, well detailed and all that kind of thing. It's hue and pine, which is highly regarded in Australia as a timber. Um, but whoever made this didn't think much of it as, uh, I don't know, if it was a first attempt or third attempt or what. Um, but it's always worth, if you have something you're not totally satisfied with, just push the bounds a bit, experiment, um, and if you destroy the bowl, it doesn't really matter. It's only a bit of wood. Um, and uh, you can cut it in half, and you learn so much by just looking at the cross sections. So I'd encourage you all to do that.